You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela and Marcel, episode number 134. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. Hey, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Marshall, how are you doing today? You know, to be a little honest, I woke up feeling yeah. a little blah today because the weather oh. changed. It's, uh-huh. it's dreary out. <laughs> it's, yep. it's still dark in the house. So, um, yeah, so I kind of yeah. woke up just like, ugh. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's fall in the Pacific Northwest. So yep. the rains have returned. <laughs> yeah, this is when I have to definitely get like my exercise game going on this time of the year uh, just to keep the endorphins yeah. going so that I don't yeah. slip into that, you know, um, seasonal depression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've actually been relieved because this means I don't have to be out watering every night. Which no, is kinda no, nice, definitely. So. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I had a really fun weekend. My oldest daughter, who is now 34, can you believe my oldest daughter's 34? No. (laughs) (laughs) That boggles my mind. Like, how did that happen? She's visiting from Alaska. So we've been having a great time together. So I have two daughters. And so the three of us have just been having a wonderful time. And we actually... I don't know if I told you this. We got tickets to go see the Indigo Girls. Oh, that's going to be so fun. I love the Indigo Girls. I know. I'm surprised at how many people actually know who the Indigo Girls are. Yeah. Like, I used to be a big fan of them in the 90s. And so my kids kind of grew up listening to their music because I would just play it throughout the house. And Jenna really likes them. Celia, not so much. Like, her tastes are a little bit more on the harder rock side, not the folky side. But at any rate. We're going to go see the Indigo Girls because she does like the Indigo Girls. And so, um, and they're playing right here in Olympia. Can you believe that? Oh, like, that's going to be great. By the way, hi, Jenna. Uh, hi, Celia. If you guys are listening to this, I'm <laughs> glad you came to visit, Jenna. Hope you guys are all having yeah. fun. Yeah, we are having a great time. So, so that's what we've been up to. That's great. Just a little reminder for everybody who's listening to this podcast. If you get value out of this podcast and you want to help get the word out, just go to iTunes and give us a rating and write us a review. Can you do that for us? Because that really helps with the algorithms. This way people find us if there are lots of ratings and lots of reviews. And so when somebody goes and searches for a weight loss podcast, it'll show up. So never underestimate the power of your honest review. And we really appreciate it. Plus, we just like to hear feedback. I don't know. It just, it keeps me going. I love it when somebody writes a review or, you know, or likes Uh our podcast because then it's like we know that somebody's getting something out of it. And it it really um, gives me a lot of joy to to hear what people think. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, awesome. So guess what, everybody? With the dreary weather coming back to the Pacific Northwest, it's that time of year again. This is our seasonal reminder anyway that it's that time of year again. I call it sugar season. And that's what I wanted to talk about this week because what I'm talking about here is a deliberate attempt by the food and beverage industry to get us to indulge as the weather starts to get icky and the days are getting shorter and it's darker and we're spending more time indoors and we're really kind of starting to hunker down. And we naturally start to want to eat more. I like I sometimes I wonder if we have bear genes in us or something. Right. Because it's like <laughs> it's like we eat and we sleep and we hibernate. And so the food industry takes full advantage of this in their marketing tactics. And so I want you all to just notice. So it starts with fall and pumpkins and then it moves on to Halloween treats. And then it's Thanksgiving and then it's Christmas. And then it's Valentine's Day, and then it's St. Patrick's Day, and it goes all the way through Easter. So this is like a six or seven month period of deliberate attempts by the food industry to get us to eat more. And I know that as someone who struggles with sugar, I really dread this time of year. The temptations are everywhere, and we have so many social cues to indulge. 
oh gosh, so many of my friends, have you seen this, the pumpkin spice latte stuff all over Facebook? Oh, I, yeah. I've been seeing it oh, for like yeah. the last two, no, maybe even three weeks. It seems like it's a little premature this year, but that's, yeah, yeah. that's that's a huge thing that just yeah. bothers me. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. So here's what I want you to understand. The food giants are all about sugar season. The marketing attempts are bold and obvious. If you just walk into any grocery store, as soon as late August, they're marketing for Halloween. And some as early as right after July 4th, I've seen Halloween stuff out. And then as soon as Halloween's over, it's time to think about Christmas. And truth be told, it's not even Halloween yet. And Christmas is already out there. I've seen eggnog at Costco available before Halloween. I mean, this is a traditional Christmas indulgence full of sugar and it's already available before Halloween. So you've got all the Christmas marketing, which is shameless and extreme, and then Valentine's Day and then Easter. And there are different flavors and colors associated with each season, all in a deliberate attempt to activate cravings in your brain so you'll buy their toxic stuff. There are ads that associate sugar and flour products with various pleasurable traditions. So just start noticing and becoming aware of all of these deliberate attempts to do what my colleague David Kessler calls hijacking the brain, okay? So the food industry is trying to hijack your brain and get you to purchase stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, one place that is really bad is the dollar store. Like like they have Christmas candy already out. They have the Halloween candy. They they are so bad with with this kind of marketing. Whenever I go in oh, there, it just really? irks me. Yeah, and it's really cheap, and so people buy it. Yeah, and yeah it's, it's really yeah. bad there. Oh, man. Well, let's talk about what we can do to protect ourselves from the sugar binges that are so common during this seven to eight month season. And I just want to say, if you have kids or grandkids, or if you teach kids, it's especially important to tune into this podcast But even if you're not around kids, what we're going to talk about today will help you understand why the struggle with your weight is not your fault. So I believe that when you're wise to what's going on, you'll be better able to protect yourself from the onslaught of food and beverage ads and marketing tactics in grocery stores and coffee houses, all those places where you're being deliberately manipulated to desire something to eat or drink. Yeah, I think it's totally important to know what's going on. I want to know what's going on. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you may have noticed that it's already started with the pumpkin season, like pumpkin spice everything. Yeah. So it starts with pumpkin spice lattes in the fall. Now, don't get me wrong. I love pumpkins. (laughs) I think they're great. I love making pumpkin soup and I love roasting pumpkin seeds and I love carving pumpkins. And some people can make like major artistic masterpieces of their pumpkins. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with pumpkins. So don't get me wrong there. But the food industry is really good at processing something that's actually very natural and turning it into something toxic and addictive. And so let's just take the pumpkin spice lattes as an example. Marcel, guess how much sugar is in a 16 ounce pumpkin spice latte? Now, this is the grande size 16 ounce ones. God, grams of sugar. Okay. Um, yeah. 30. I don't know. 30? I have no idea. Have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, it turns out it has 50 grams of sugar. Oh, really? Jeez. Yeah. If you, if you look at the ingredients in a pumpkin spice latte, the first ingredient is milk and that's natural sugar in the milk. But then the second ingredient is sugar. Okay. So 50 grams of sugar. So one of our patients noticed that. Well, she noticed that it was high in calories. So she looked and she decided that, well, there are pumpkin cream cold brews that have fewer calories. And so she thought that might be a better choice, but she forgot to look at the sugar content in the pumpkin cream cold brew, which I can hardly say. (laughs) (laughs) It still has 31 grams of sugar in the 16 ounce cold brew. So those of you listeners who took part in the Belly Busters Challenge now understand that this is a lot of stress on our poor pancreas. So just think about that deliberate marketing attempt with pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin cream cold brews. Now, pumpkin spice candles, pumpkin spice soaps, not a problem, right? 
pumpkin spice lattes or cold brews or pumpkin bread, best to avoid all of that. I agree. Okay? Yeah. Now, next in the lineup of sugar holidays is Halloween. And this has turned into a huge sugar fest. So do you remember me saying that animal studies show that sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine? Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Marshall? Yeah. So let's think for a minute about what we do on Halloween. It's a tradition to pass candy out. And kids love it. But if you know that sugar is an addictive drug, do you want to be giving this drug out to children on Halloween? No. The idea of passing out addictive drugs sounds harsh. So trust me, I get it. But do we really want to be doing this? We don't want to be doing this, but it does hurt my heart a little bit to think about like as a kid because I was Uh so addicted to sugar when I was a kid. Like we've talked about this. Like I I was, if there's a sugar addict in this world, it is me. And right. it was such an important holiday. And it wasn't the dressing up. I didn't really care about all that because it was kind of scary for me. You know, I didn't want to go to haunted uh-huh. houses or anything like that. But man, we would take a pillowcase and uh-huh. we would hit the neighborhood. <laughs> and it was just yeah. like better than Christmas morning for me. And so just, oh. to, just to hear, like, it's so, it's so ingrained in my head that yeah. to think of not doing it, it's, it's, it's hard to think about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. But we want to be part of the solution. We do. Right? Yes. Not part of the problem this season. So let's talk about what you can do on Halloween. I'm sure you have a great idea. (laughs) Well, we certainly don't want to take all the fun out of Halloween. No. So let's think about what we can do instead. So maybe you can give some other sort of little treats instead of candy. So for example, kids love bendable pencils and silly straws and stickers and temporary tattoos and play-doh and glow sticks and bracelets and silly putty and bobbles like be creative there are lots of little things available at the dollar store besides the candy (laughs) this is true If you want some more ideas, there's a project called the Teal Pumpkin Project that's sponsored by FAIR. FAIR is an organization that advocates for children with food allergies. And so they are suggesting alternatives to candy because many children have allergies to peanuts and all kinds of things that go into these types of foods. And so those kids can't have them. So You put a teal pumpkin on your door and then the parents know it's safe for the kids to get treats at that home because the treats are not food related. So you just go to foodallergy.org, but we'll put a direct link to the website up in the show notes. And they have a list of all kinds of non-food treats that you can make available for kids who might be coming by your house on Halloween. And then, you know, what we do is we put out a display in our office every year with a beautiful bowl of cute little toys and necklaces and Halloween pencils and stuff. And the kids absolutely love it. It is really, really beautiful what you put together. I love your ideas. Uh I've never Uh thought about it before I met you, but ever Uh since you've been doing it, it's so beautiful. It's so attractive. It's like bright and Uh colorful. And Mm -hmm. And the um, kids love it. Yeah, and the kids absolutely love it. So um, it it is just as fulfilling for kids mm-hmm. to get that stuff because, you know, we've done it for mm-hmm. a few years now. But um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know that, that it, it is just a really yeah. beautiful display and um, the kids are just as happy with it. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're just as happy. So I want our listeners to feel good about letting go of the sugary treats on Halloween. And so here's why you can feel good about that. The first thing is you get sugar season started the right way. Like you send a message to yourself that you're not going to buy into this deliberate effort by the food industry to sell junk food for the next six to seven months. The second thing is you're going to be on the leading edge of preventing diabetes. I don't know if you realize it, but 25% of high school students already have prediabetes or diabetes. One in four high school students. That's really shocking. 13% of our children already have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Jeez. This is the same disease that alcoholics get after years of drinking, but our kids are getting it from all the fructose in our foods and beverages. So 
I mean, seriously, this is for health. This isn't because we want to be <laughs> we want to be mean and keep candy away from kids, right? The third thing is that you get to make sure that your house is not filled with temptation. So I can't tell you how many times people have told me that they bought all these Halloween treats ahead of time because they're there in the stores months ahead of time or Christmas candy, and then they end up eating it themselves. Has that ever happened to you? Oh my gosh, <laughs> has that ever happened to me? Yes. <laughs> yep. So I saw Christmas stuff up in Costco in August with the back to school stuff and the Halloween candy was out and the packages of Christmas candy go out ahead of time because they know that if you buy it and it's sitting around your house, you're not going to wait until Halloween or Christmas to indulge. If it's there, you're going to eat it. And then when you really do actually want the candy for gifts or for trick-or-treating, which you're not going to do, right? You'll have to buy more. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> that used to happen mm-hmm. to us all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So think now about how you're going to handle all this temptation as Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then Valentine's Day and then St. Patrick's Day and then Easter come around. Remember that for each holiday, the food industry is going to dye candies and frostings and little peeps with the theme color, right? So you'll have orange filling and Oreos for Halloween. Right. And you'll have red and green filling for Christmas and pink filling for Valentine's Day and blue and yellow and pink spring colors for Easter. Like, I have to tell you that it's a lot easier if you're off sugar to start with, right? It's true. If your brain's not constantly being triggered by the marketing and the colors, then it's way easier. And if you're wise to the marketing tactics, it's easier too. Does that make sense? Yeah, you just see it in a different way. And being, you know, Mm -hmm. knowledge is power for sure. Yeah, knowledge is power. So if you want to take the leap right now and get off sugar and flour, I actually have a mini course available on my website. It's called How to Get Rid of Belly Fat. It's about 70 minutes long. And there's a workbook and a sugar detox menu. And it will teach you everything you need to know. It's the same information I taught in the Belly Busters Challenge in a video format. It's a great way to get your weight loss journey started. So feel free to head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com and you'll see a tab there where you can sign up for the course. Oh yeah, it's so much easier when you understand the science, right? Yeah, it it is. It's a lot easier when you understand the science and when you understand the food marketing techniques. It just is. When you understand how it is the food industry is trying to manipulate your brain And then you understand the science of how all that sugar gets processed in the body and how it turns to belly fat. Like, it makes everything so much easier. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm just saying it's easier. (laughs) Just be kind to your pancreas. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) All right. Do you have anything else you want to add, Marshall? That is it. Thanks, you guys. All right. Yeah, that's all for today. So enjoy the month of October. But please don't get sucked into sugar season. And if you get trick-or-treaters at your place, please help the kids out by offering non-sugar treats. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.